Aloha. I am Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And what a journey this is. Uh, today, we are not going any further than 17 miles to Honolulu Holly, from where I am to where they are. And we're going to talk about our coming election and the amendments to the city and county charter. There are four of them, but there's two very special ones that we need to talk about because they're new. The, the whole idea of what these amendments are are new. And like I told you before, the city and county is a corporation. And like all corporations, they are they have a charter and it guides what they can and cannot do. And every election time, they have a, a meeting of the Charter Commission, which is made up of all kinds of people from the community. And those that watch and dog it, there are those that just go and hear every word. And then they come up with amendments. Now the charter says revised, Charter. So the charter has already been revised and revised and revised. This year, there are four amendments to the charter. So on your ballot, turn it over and on the back side are the amendments. Please turn it over. Don't, don't let it go. And if you don't vote, now this is screwy, but if you don't vote, it's a yes. So if you say, no, I don't want that, you have to specify and make it a no. But we don't want you to do any no's. We want you to do yes. So today we're going to talk with Tommy Waters, Council Member Tommy Waters' office, because they are the ones that created this amendment. And it's a very special thing. I have not heard of it before in any city. And I think it's wonderful. So Davin, aloha. Aloha, Marsha, how are you? Uh, we're doing fine. Listen, sweetheart, um, and okay, forgive me if I call him sweetheart, but he's younger than my youngest child, so he's still a sweetheart. And he's such a hard worker, he does so much. So tell us, oh. tell us, uh, Davin, what is Charter Amendment 2? Now remember folks, vote yes on two. Okay, Devin, sure, tell us about it. So, so simply put, Charter Amendment 2 would establish a youth commission under the managing director's office. And, and the youth commission would essentially advise both the council and the new administration on policies impacting children and youth within the city. So um, how are these people, the young people, how are they selected? Uh, are they, is it an election? Are they just appointed? How, how does that work? No, it's a, it's a good question. Um, within the language of resolution 19329, uh, which was the resolution that helped to initiate the charter amendment, um, it specifies that by August 1st, 2021, there shall be 15 youth commissioners, nine of which are chosen by each of the council members and six of which are chosen by the new mayor. So and they'll each, go through a yeah, and they'll go through a standard council competition. person. Yeah, each council person gets to choose one. Is that it? That's correct. And they'll go through a standard uh, confirmation process through the city council, same as any other uh, commission. And do they have any rights and privileges, or not, or or no? Um, how does that work? Well, once you say sure. I'm a commissioner, then what happens? Sure. Then no, that's a great question. Um, to sort of touch base on the specifics, and I apologize for looking down. Um, that's fine. Following sort of the formation and the appointment of these commissioners, um, they're going to essentially establish rules of procedure and just additional rules to help govern how these commission meetings will occur. Following that, um, they will be tasked with advising the council and the mayor 
essentially on policies, needs, assessments, priorities, programs, and budgets concerning the children and youth of the city. They'll also express the policy priorities of the, of the children and youth of the city and respond to requests for comment and recommendation on matters referred to the commission by the council, the mayor, and any officers, agencies, including semi-autonomous agencies and executive and legislative branch advisory committees of the city. And, and you know, talking just with um, some of the other staff, as well as some of the other council members and just um, even some of the agencies, I, I know that there's a great deal of excitement about how we can engage youth to talk about the pressing issues impacting our city. Are you going to do newspapers? What, how will they know that I want to be a part of this? This is something I'd like to do. I think that it's incumbent upon all of um, us to try our best to make sure that folks are aware of it, right? Mm -hmm. To the extent that we can get out into the community and get people excited about it, I think it's great. And, and, and you know, Marsha, one of the things that we've heard from some opponents is that, well, you know, there's this other state youth commission going on. How do we know that there'll be enough people to fill this commission, right? <laughs> and <laughs> no, no, I'm glad you're laughing about it. <laughs> No, no, uh, just, just to let you know, I can remember elementary school teaching civics and learning about the city and the state and what it does and whatnot. And I've been on the path ever since then, as you know, <laughs> you know, it's, I'm 82. It's been out there just being a part and learning and learning and learning how, how these different things work and how they work together. Now in Hawaii, and anybody that's listening that's not in Hawaii or not in, or in Oahu, it's hard to tell the city from the state since they're across the street from each other, but they are, there's a difference. And I think that because there's a state youth and a, the county, that they, they are learning different things. The state operates differently from the city so I don't think that's a problem. So if anything, and that's our thought. Thing. Huh? And that's our thought too, Marsha. I mean, when we think about the issues impacting our city, um, whether it's climate change policy or affordable housing, or even things like public safety and welfare, right? These are issues that are primarily handled by the, the counties the and the city. Now, when I work at the city council for Congressman Rod, uh, Councilman Rod Tam, the phone rang all the time. There was not one minute that there wasn't somebody, one constituent with a problem. Water main breaks do not happen from nine to five. They happen at three o'clock in the morning. You know that. Uh, traffic lights don't work and such and such. And the phone for the city is constant. So it's totally different from the state. You know, the state can say, well, we'll do this next year. The city, it's now. People want it now. So it's a good learning process. That uh, some ab streets, absolutely. Some streets was just crazy as hell that this part of the street where I live, this part is the state. And over here is the feds. And then back here yeah. is the city. But you drive down one and they all look the same. Mm -hmm. So, so now I think this is a wonderful opportunity for young people. And then maybe they'll grow up to be mayor one day. And really that's, that's the hope, right? I mean, I know that there was um, a speaker recently on this group, Youth for Oahu. And if mm -hmm. folks want to find out more information about the Youth Commission Charter Amendment, they can mm -hmm. go to youthforoahu.org. Um, but recently, I think there was an, a mayor, and I want to say it was from a city in Colorado um, that spoke because he was on actually on um, the youth commission for his city. Mm -hmm. So, so there's a lot of potential there. And and realistically, what what we hope is this, right? It's been the case where in Hawaii, people have talked about how do we get youth engaged, and the theory that Councilmember Waters has the idea that Councilmember Waters is putting forth with this amendment is that if we can empower youth to be involved through this commission, 
it gives them a stepping stone to feel engaged, to feel empowered to take action and to be able to make a real difference in our local communities. And ultimately, by the way, the policies that the council passes here today, this year, it will impact their generation. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, of course. And that's the whole, I I think, I'm, I'm sure this is what goes in, mm -hmm. what went into creating this, is exactly that, that they are going to be wage earners, teachers, parents, whatever. And then they, they have to take on this responsibility of having the city work. And the, the major ideas of how it works, why it works. And I think this is just the best thing that I've heard for a long time. Because I think, well, I think the young people will enjoy it. I know I did oh. learning all of this, the little, the minutia of the city. Well, so, Marcia, we're, we're happy to hear that. And again, I would just urge voters to strongly consider uh, voting yes on this. Okay, now again, you turn over the ballot and on the back are the amendments. There are four of them. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I would suggest just voting yes, because unless you have a thing about it, but if you leave it blank, it's a yes. So if you say no, you got to mark it no. You got to fill it in black, the little box, fill it in with black ink. It, and the court decided on this years ago. Uh, so don't ask why. <laughs> it was crazy. That, but so do vote yes. Do vote yes. Um, I don't know the details of all four, but I'd say just vote yes for all four. But that'll that'll take care of that. Well, and Marcia, I, I know that we've we've talked a little bit about the Youth Commission. I, I know also Councilmember Waters introduced um, Resolution 19331, which eventually became the uh, Charter Amendment Number Three as well. Number three is what? So that one is: Shall the Revised City Charter be amended to allow the Honolulu Ethics Commission to control its own budget? after it has been enacted. It's a very complicated think, way of saying- I think very, that is very good because yeah. the ethics commission should stand alone and should not be dependent on somebody, some other department to say yay or nay, yes you can or no you can't. The whole purpose for the ethics is to stand alone. So I think that's very good. So that's number three. Okay, so we're gonna vote yes on number two and three. And we may as well vote yes on all the others. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but while you're voting, just do it. <laughs> yeah, just do it. <laughs> yeah, well, yes. Because that's, that, you know, the city is a corporation and that's the way it, it operates. So we need to, we, we need to be involved. It's our tax money that runs the city. So we need to be involved. So vote yes on all of them. Let's, let's just vote yes. But I like the idea that the ethics commission needs to be independent so that they don't have to depend on somebody else because that's, in fact, if something comes up, but that's the person that's been supporting them, how do they say, well, I don't know about that. You know. Well, and, and again, Marsha, that's really the whole point of it. I mean, you know, for, for the purposes of just administration, um, the Ethics Commission has been administratively tied to Corporation Council. Mm -hmm. um, and what this charter amendment, as, as you point out, essentially allows the commission to do is upon approval of the budget, the general budget for the city, um, and upon approval, obviously, by the mayor of that budget, the Ethics Commission will be able to access its budget without sort of there being a risk of it being withheld by administration. Well, you know, it's a pleasure visiting with you as always. Um, and we only have a little bit of time left since my computer was screwy. So um, you tell uh, your boss, uh, our council member, Tommy Waters, who is also my district, that we thank him for the 
two amendments. Thank you for all that you do. And um, oh, we have a Zoom meeting tonight in our district, your district. So you will attend, right? I will try my best to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, no, Marcia. It, and it, we're going to talk about the amendments at that meeting also. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. So thank you, my dear, and we will see you soon.